Hi, this is Justin, and you are listening to The Golden Shakespeare, the podcast where we talk about movies. Today with me is... Patrick. James. And... Sam. Sam's new with us. He was... He, this is his first, uh... One of us. It's, no. it is, it's a cult. <laughs> Sam, you can attest that this is pretty cult-like, it's right? It's very cult-like. We had to wear white robes and drink flavor aid, and it was magical. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh... It's, it's great to be a part of something, finally. How's Some, your hood so, fit? Something yeah. bigger, like the, you know, like something bigger than this world would normally allow. Yeah. Beyond mm. death, that's what the Golden Shakespeare is. Mm-hmm. Um, we've already talked about our favorite movies, but we don't know what Sam's favorite movie is because we hope he will join us again in the future on the Golden Shakespeare. We want to just uh, get you guys to know him. So, Sam, what is your favorite movie? I'm gonna, you know, I had a bit of a conundrum. I was taking a shower and I was trying to think, what am I gonna pick? Because it's like I really like Blade Runner and I really like The Insider, and they kind of flip flip you know every yeah. so often but i think i'm gonna go with the insider starring al pacino and uh russell crowe uh, who directed that michael mann directed yeah michael that mann did um yeah. what do you know what year came out off the top of your head yeah 99 nice um yeah. why do you like that movie so much um i guess i saw it in a time in my life where i there was a lot to admire in the two main characters uh al pacino being uh, uh it's based on a true story and al pacino plays uh you know his his name's escaped me right now but he's the he works for um CBS, and they, it's, what the hell is the, what's the news program? Oh, I see. Uh, this, uh, 60 Minutes, 60 yeah. Minutes, yeah. And uh, they he does investigative journalism, and he, he gets uh, this story with Russell Crowe, who works for a uh, tobacco company, and uh, he's just been fired, and he's going to, he has, you know, insider info, and... I guess to me, there's just a lot to admire in the two characters because they're both fighting for what's right, even though like all the odds are against them. And at any point in the story, they could easily uh, like cave and just you know give up. You know, there's really no reason for them to keep going other than they just know they have to do it because it's the right thing to do. And I know when you showed it to me, it was my first time yeah. watching. You you brought me over. Actually, you planned for a night for me to I come did, over yeah. just to show me the insider yeah. and. Uh, I knew it was based on true story, a true story, because you told me that when we were watching it. But even as you were watching it, um, it had a suspense that a lot of those true story movies don't have for me, because I always expect uh, it to end up happily in the yeah. end, like for it like to work out. Yeah. And in this one, uh, it had a big vibe of that. It's it's literally like trying to see these two people climb a mountain that they can't climb to get yeah, what's yeah. right. And, and you're you're on that journey with them too. Like I, it like hooked me right from the beginning. Yes, and me too. I felt like I was Russell Crowe. Yeah, that must feel good. It it (laughs) felt great, yeah. And I felt like I was Al Pacino also, because it kind of like, at one point, it then just becomes now Al Pacino's side of the story, and it kind of veers off with him, and then you're like, oh, come on, come on, Al. Fucking get that story on the news. You're on a first-name basis with Mr. Pacino? Well, he was... I was at him. He was was him, him, so... so if you're not on a first name basis with yourself, you have a problem. Like if you refer to yourself as Mr. Wilkinson, we have Doctor. Doctor <laughs> Doctor Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing I liked about that movie was a very powerful scene near the end of the movie, and it's something that happens in a lot of the uh, Michael Mann movies I enjoy, is that he has a very strong use of song choice. I don't yeah. know a better way to put it. Yeah. But like there's that the moment near the climax. In the where, hotel? Yeah. Yeah. yeah where where it's he has like that weird the vision. vision. Yeah. yeah. It's uh it's a very powerful scene. Yeah, that I really, was really like that. Cool. Yeah, very cool movie. And I guess I also like it because it's a big underdog. It should have gotten an Oscar, and it didn't. Well, that's probably because... And it made no money at the box office, too. Well, I heard that um, because I am the official Disney historian here, yes. that uh, it was released by Disney, yeah. by one of their subsidiaries, and they tried to down downplay it and keep it under the radar because it was such a big political snafu, yeah. and it, people were not happy about that movie being made. So they tried to kill it after and, they made it, and that's unfortunate because that's part of like that's one of the many reasons why movies should be made to yeah, like it's, it's talk a about very these realistic movie. It's really well done. Yeah, it yeah. got it got as I understand it got no press for the Oscars, and Disney didn't go after any awards. Yeah. with it. But if it was the Weinstein's, they would have been all over the Oscars. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> the Academy would have known about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today's movie that we watched for movie night, as we're calling it, registered trademark, all that blah blah blah, mm-hmm. uh, was the 1982 The Thing. Not the new one, uh, directed by John Carpenter. Um, the movie is about... Patrick, I'll let you sum up the movie, because I'm put on the spot. I put myself on the spot, and I started to panic, and so I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> if you want to bounce it to someone else, you can, too. Yeah, Don't throw it my way. No. Um, the Thing is a movie about a military... Or not a military. It's a scientific base in Antarctica 
that's the south, not the north, if anyone was wondering. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the south. And um, they're just doing their own business, doing science down there, and then um, some Scandahoovians in a helicopter come... <laughs> Scandahoovians. Some Scandahoovians. Are they from like a Dr. Seuss world <laughs> with the Lorax? Yeah, oh, all the places you'll go. They were talking in rhyme. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were. They yeah. were talking to the dog in rhyme. If you watch that on the commentary, they tell you. Um, but yeah, they're they're flying a helicopter chasing this dog across the Arctic tundra and they're shooting it and trying to kill it. And uh, the Scandinavian gets killed and this dog kind of wanders into the camera like, oh, that was weird. And they go and they find the Scandinavian camp and it's been destroyed and there's no signs of life or anything of what went wrong. And uh, it becomes clear after some some bad stuff goes down. Some that musings. Some, some events and some musings and some contemplation that the, <laughs> that the dog was actually an alien life form. And this life form can copy anything it gets into close proximity with and mimic it perfectly. And uh, all the men on this Arctic base are kind of stuck in the situation where you can't trust anyone because anyone could be the thing yeah. and it's just an overwhelming sense of paranoia from then on in until the end of the movie mixed yeah. in with some good horror tropes but it's more like um i don't want to say who done it but it's very it's kind of a, it's it's to me it's more of a like a horrifying thriller than just a yeah. horror movie yeah. it has a bigger uh like it's more about the people than the alien because the yeah. alien only shows up for like the main event like yeah. it doesn't really and it's also um it's a special effects movie. Yes, and it's a it's a I don't I don't want to say gore, but that's kind of tied into the, I guess it's tied into special effects. But that's like the kind of the things it is. It's a horror movie. It's a suspense movie, and it's a special effects. There's picture. a lot to love. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good things, and, and, also, it's, and it's a Kurt Russell. Movie. Yeah, yeah, I was just it's, gonna say <laughs> yeah. it's a Kurt Russell movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so like beloved. Beloved, beloved or beloved? I think both can work. Yeah, beloved. It's so beloved by the horror community too because it's got all those different parts to it that everyone like a lot of different people can find in it that they like. You yes. Know, if you're a gore hound, you're gonna find that in there. And I and I really like that it, it found its audience because it was a huge disappointment when it came out and John Carpenter like got attacked for the movie and they yeah. said like this is the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. It basically ended his career. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and he's like, I don't know what happened and because like a couple weeks before it came out E.T. came out people weren't ready for the thing they wanted like happy aliens yeah. and it's, like, it's a very like the ending of that movie is very it's, downer like, it's like one know? of the darkest endings I've seen to a movie mm-hmm. like I can't I can't think of a darker ending off it's the not, top of my it's head it's not that dark oh, I it's, mean it's pretty it's dark, pretty dark in, especially Arlington in the time Arlington Road is even darker I, that was the one I yeah. brought up last week um, um, with and that's uh, got Mothman not prophecies. Kurt Russell oh, right. but, uh, uh, Jeff Bridges Jeff Bridges well, I honestly can sometimes like yeah. in my own imagination mix the two up yeah. fuck you um, but um, <laughs> oh. uh, it has you. a downer ending because especially in that time like, especially right around when E.T. came up yeah. they Audiences were Everyone used to their stories of, ha- of their stories ending happy, and the heroes getting out of it. And this one, the heroes just kind of you know hit a brick. They don't even get any resolution if they actually won their fight. It's literally yeah. like uh, I, I know you guys talk about it every now and again, but uh, Hollywood uh, will tend to have these uh, kind of decades of happier movies and then darker movies yes. and then happier. everything is cyclical. so did, did uh that's um did the thing come out during a happy yeah. time that's yeah that, reagan uh, reagan yeah. era yeah. everyone's just like yeah Reaganomics. let's be happy and then when yeah. the 90s came it we went back to that yeah. the darker time it, it came out you know yeah. way too early 82 there's a there's a lot of stuff coming out that summer too like you had uh like blade runner poltergeist blade runner is also not like i mentioned earlier another favorite movie of mine but that one also was horrendous at the box office, but yeah. it was a downer kind of movie that came out at the same time, right? Well, if you but, had a voiceover at the very end of your yeah. movie, like Harrison Ford did at the end of Blade Runner. I don't know why. I, I don't want to know. Right. You know what? To, to date, I have not actually seen Blade Runner. Yeah. Watch, I have, watch the final cut. I have yeah. uh, I, I have it sitting on my shelf. Aren't and, you supposed to watch the, the Ridley Scott cut? Is the yeah, cut the final show? cut. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, I have it sitting on my shelf, and uh, for about... Five or six years, uh, my other buddy Curtis, he's like, come on over, you know, we'll chill out and we'll watch Blade Runner. And it's been one of these things that we keep saying we're going to do, but we never do it. And I'm like, every time I think I'm going to watch it, I'm like, no, i got to wait and watch it with Curtis. And <laughs> it's been put off for six years. <laughs> well, now is a good time because 25 de Quattro, what is this year? 20, it, yeah, he got yeah, it. He nailed yeah. it. Yeah. 
is the year. 25 de Quattro. <laughs> That's the year. Yeah. That's the year. <laughs> it's the year of doing things. Justin and I have decided. It's the. This is why the podcast is happening. The it's year the, of do. It's the year of do. It's do do the do. do. It's do. the year of Mountain Dew. We're sponsored by Mountain Dew. Hey guys, I, I bought some Cool thank, Ranch Doritos. Yeah. Let's go play Xbox. Now, of course, um, we were definitely, our thirst was quenched as we watched the, the thing. Yeah. Um, one thing I really liked about it is that, uh, is as Patrick was saying, when the dog comes and we find out that the alien is here, we find it out pretty much like that. There's none of this, like, they don't, like, it slowly builds towards the alien. Literally just the, the dog starts having a seizure. And then his face rips and then out. everyone they, like basically everyone in the camp goes and sees it. Yeah. Right? Like it literally just starts it right away. Yeah, there's there's no like there's no job. Well, wow, wh- wh- what are you talking yeah. about? Well, there's an alien. I don't yeah, believe yeah. you. They do that so much. And it's like Jaws was the movie to do that. I think probably not first, but to do it the best way. And then every single movie did that after. It was like, well, we got this big event coming up. We can get out of here. We got to get ready for that. We don't have time for your nonsense. Next week is the 4th of July. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... Even Jaws 2 was like that. <laughs> it's it's like uh, John Carpenter knew that this movie should just keep going and be like something that just focuses yeah. on well, always moving. It, it's, uh, it's also, I think, one of those... Uh, good things um where it just adds to the movie because these guys don't even know that it's an alien well that's actually until later in the movie yeah but actually just and, um mm-hmm. it's like it's because the movie is about their suspicion so they wanted to get that suspicion going immediately they yeah. didn't want to you know have it the, builds attention but it's also just like uh, in the very beginning of the movie, before it's like anybody could have been this, you know, sort of thing. It, it's just like, what the fuck was that? What did yeah. we all see? You mm-hmm. know, and that kind of leads to them splitting up. Yeah, they can't do everything as a group anymore. Yeah. adding to the tension. So, one thing I think that, we, and we'll probably touch on it a little bit, the the prequel that was made. Um, the I think the prequel does better. One of the only things I think is that in the prequel they really do. Um, there's lots of factions in that movie where certain people like they split it into groups and like yeah. these three people are like no these are the three people we trust and that other group is like in this one all the men maybe because there is a woman in that cast yeah. there are two there are two women in that cast yeah there is but in this movie it's all men and they kind of stay in this big evil untrusting circle of hate mm-hmm. and distrust like men would do yeah like a real, real like life. this circle of hate we yeah. have going yeah. on here yeah no no a circle of love our cult is about love Yes. A perfect love. Yeah. One love. Um, yeah, but <laughs> they're, they they don't splinter off and go in factions like, oh, me and Blair are going to hide over here and anyone who comes here, we're going to kill you. Like, they stay together and that kind of feeds into the paranoia. That's exactly how I played Trouble in Terrorist Town. Uh, and, and it's... <laughs> Which is just the thing, the game. And, and, that, and that's one thing I really like. It, it, I agree with you. I, I haven't seen the prequel. Um, I think it's worth a look. I probably will. CGI. I probably will watch it. Um, it. Yeah, it also does computer graphics better. Because the one thing yeah. I noticed about this movie is that they basically make it so that um, uh, McCready is in charge, mm-hmm. and then uh, once they doubt him, he basically just muscles his way back in charge. Yeah, yeah. Kurt Russell like is really in the driver's seat of the whole movie. Like. Well, he's... It, it's kind of an ensemble cast, but not really. Like, mm. it's an ensemble, but. Kurt Russell is clearly focused on. Everyone kind of is very calm about whenever they see something, they're just kind of staring at it with no real reaction. And I always like, thought I they get, were kind of shocked. I get yeah. that yeah. that is a reaction, but for everyone to react in just like static shock, you know? I think. You think one guy at least would like McCready fly does, though. He's the I only one that. that takes action, right? At the dog thing? Yes. He's just like, yeah, he's he's like get the, the fuck out of the way, guys. Like, come on. You know? Like, Child, you blast just, it. Yeah. I, guess, I guess you don't... What I'm getting at is you don't have anyone who's yeah. just straight up panicking ever. You know? Well, they do panic later when they're, when, they're, when, they're, when they're tied to the couch. Yes. And the thing well, starts wouldn't you changing. fucking panic if you're yeah. like, tied you to the couch? You could say Blair was the one guy that kind of went... Blair's very emotional. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> he's a little emotional he's and smart, smart too. Yeah. So yes. that's a bad call. I, I think he said he, like, he pretty much saved the world by destroying everything. Oh yeah, he because good, it could have right been thing. bad. Yeah, right? That's a hypothetical. If the thing like called for like evac or something, then yeah, it would have been fucked. Yeah. The whole yeah. situation. Um, but we we were talking about that. One of the big through lines when you were watching the movie is keeping track. When do we think Wilfred Brimley changed? Because he is the thing at the end. He's the main the, agent. Yeah. The thing, but after the first act kind of sets up the movie 
it becomes very clear that he's like on the trail of thing. He's the one doing all the science work and like figuring out and doing these great computer programs, figuring out how long until all of Earth is taken over. So he's going after the thing. But we know he becomes one by the end. So we were trying to work out like, is he... Some people have different theories. Like the thing... People who are infected by the thing don't know they're infected by the thing until it subverses you and takes over your consciousness and yeah. well, that's, when it, it decides it's the right moment. I think that yeah, it's like it's kind of like a it's just like sleeps inside of you until the point where it's just like okay now it's my time like they're threatening me or I need to do this that's, to further my goals that's, and organism. That's um, another sort of the contrast between the prequel and this movie in the original thing uh, the thing is much more of a reaction yeah. um, he doesn't really like the thing doesn't really have a goal except to consume really it seems well, right? it's, it's hiding it's it is to blend it in. is but yeah. it's not really given any uh, um, sort of higher intelligence it's kind of just like self defense only yeah. or like when I'm hungry you know it's a very opportunistic thing and in the prequel uh, the thing seems to have more of an agenda I would actually disagree with that that uh, the creature only f- is looking just to feed in this one because so. he's plotting constantly he is like he the the thing itself is um like creating chaos within the group because like i'm like convinced that like when mccready got the hole in his jacket yeah that was the thing doing that yeah. to fuck up the group i see i never i never yeah. really i it was I never... trying to make everyone panic and not trust everyone so then it could like Split them apart. See, I'm, I'm, all, I'm of the mindset. And then they'd be separately, right? And then it would attack them. And you know. I'm of the mindset that you don't know you're the thing. That's yeah. really how I think of the thing. And so I can never, I can't, I personally cannot buy into the theory that the thing could plot as a human without exposing It's not itself. plotting as a human. It's plotting as the thing controlling something. It's like basically brain, being brainwashed. They won't remember those memories possibly. Or the thing will then convince their brain that they're doing these things because of it. And <laughs> See, the thing I love about this movie, The Thing, is that people have such set in stone ideas about the movie. Like, no, this is how The yeah. Thing works. But there's none of that. Yeah, it's not, and, that's, and that's what makes it so that's cool. So yeah. Genius. Yeah. 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 But the reason why I think ultimately he's intelligence because the proof is that he's been rebuilding mm-hmm. as Wilford Brimley and that's kind of like no, proof see, is in the pudding. See, see for, for me I think uh, just the back to the whole, whole McCready jacket I think that was actually uh, Keith David's character um, trying to muscle Kurt Russell out as top dog. That, that, that is a fair that, theory. That, that, that is a fair really, theory. That's always what I thought about that. Mm, I know? never even thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that that's but to me in in the original at least you know as a kid and just because when you're impressionable as a kid it sticks with you I've always thought of the thing in the original as more of a reactionary thing yeah um, and like I said just in the prequel it really did seem to have more of an agenda but you could explain that away even as just with the events of the prequel um, the thing probably just being like well my situation's fucked yeah what do now survive <laughs> you know so. And, and the thing, like, what I really like about the whole visual aspect of the thing is that um, it has all these um, different uh, appearances in it. Right? Like, yeah. it's different. It's like, I remember I was talking, when we when, when I saw it with you back when yeah. we lived in Red Deer, we were talking about how we imagined that... Um, it's bits of, like, every... Of every place it's been, it's been through. Been yeah. 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 It, like, carries all of that with it yeah. from its beginning. So what did it start off as? Yeah, which you is, know, like... What was its original... It, that's, like, what... A Care Bear. Yeah, a Care Bear. What Patrick was saying last, uh, last week is that this is a very kind of Lovecraftian story yeah. it, because it has that element of just absolute unknown to it. It's probably just some, like, crazy disease from another planet that's just, like, mutated and, like... Yeah, does, its like, way. does it have its own physical body or yeah. is it like a virus Probably yeah a virus. it's a virus, it's a virus yeah, yeah. Well, which makes it kind of scarier because like you, is it airborne like it, like how does yeah, it because they don't even really uh in the movie explain how the thing no. transfers from person and, to person and that that's interesting because like one of the theories we were talking about the theories for the ending and some people are like oh like the the they share the whiskey at the end and they're like, oh, well, if they're sharing that, will that contaminate him? If, if one of them is a thing, well, they'll both be contaminated. Is it transferred by saliva? Is it yeah. by blood? Yeah. You know, like, some people... It's The thing about the thing lore is that it's it's not set in stone and the rules aren't clearly explained, which allows all these people to make up all these uh, theories. Like, 
as far as we know, most people get taken over the thing by having something stuck in their face, like another person's hand. Yeah. Like they get their face fucked and yeah. then they turn it yeah, into that's, a thing. Yeah, I always thought it was kind of like more physical, physical contact. Like, yeah, it was like getting fucked by the thing. You had to get yeah. fucked by it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that, the, the, the thing dog just jizzes all over that yeah. one. <laughs> Toothpaste. Doesn't that dog also melt? Like, isn't that that reaction? Like, because there was yeah. that one dog that was melted. Yeah. And like that, yeah, that's like. Up. We, oh, was that dog melted? I always thought he was mutating into the thing at that point. <laughs> I or actually don't know. It's one of those that I actually don't even remember oh but. because like i i've never seen a melted dog but yeah to me i just thought it was turning into another thing mm-hmm. and another thing we this, how, many, how many times are we gonna say, I, I was, I was say yeah. we need a thing counter we need a bell every, every time yeah for the foam game uh, do a drinking game the thing edition the golden shakespeare yeah oh yeah. god yeah um we were debating some people think that the thing is a hive mind or is it or is it just is it a hive mind, or is it, like, lots of individual organisms that cooperate? I actually, my personal theory for it is that it's many different organisms that yeah, cooperate. That's mine, too. Just and like the fact how McCready need... says that it's, like, each part of it is its own, like, organism yeah, but, but, that tries to escape. But can a thing, like, two two infected different bodies, like, Patrick and I right now are things. Right, we're things. So yeah. you're fucked, but yeah. um, we're both things. Do we know that we're things? That's, or do we just know I think, that? Yeah. These... I think they do. I think maybe it's, it's kind of like it's like a, a an ant colony or something. They're yeah. all working together. Yeah. yeah, I mean they are their own individual thing. Because like I think cell, as soon as it's all part of it, like it wants to take over the whole world, right? Yeah, I re- I recall reading a theory on a website where it was like multiple thing theory, where some like two characters were infected at the same time, but they didn't know, and they were working at cross purposes. Yeah, or the vice versa, they were cooperating. But that's an interesting idea, both ways. Yeah, I, I just that's one thing I never could yeah. decide. I, I can't wrap my head around that. I just go like because <laughs> uh, like. But I like the whole multiple organism. I look at that like you need to kill every part. Like if you cut it up into three pieces, it's like a worm where they'll all go away. Yeah. Yeah. And they could come back later in the future. And, yeah, it's like a Vengevine. Or even like... But then it's like one of those things where it turns into three different things. Or, yeah. you know... Yeah. Like, like this is the stomach thing. These are the legs thing. <laughs> <laughs> this thing eats really well. That one runs really fast. This yeah. thing is the poop thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say just... just <laughs> legs, tentacles, and poop. It just poops everywhere it runs. <laughs> God. But it would it well, you catch that one. It would obviously gra- grow spider legs out of its legs because <laughs> every individual thing grows fucking spider legs. Yeah. I and um that's I think just the true the whole the reason why I think the thing, apart from being such a really good like really good movie, that keeps it so I guess like Tense. Impo- important yeah. is the fact that they don't ever answer these questions. Yeah. You know. But it's not to the point like in Prometheus where it's so unanswered <laughs> that it's irritating yeah. or pretentious or, what about yeah. okay let's just sidetrack to prometheus very quickly <laughs> what about prometheus bothers you patrick because here's my take on prometheus uh it is happening in the same universe as aliens but it is Agreed. not it is not connected to the aliens films Bullshit. anything that happens in prometheus isn't has no bearing on Alien, because aliens are... Whalen just, Corporation? Yes. Xenomorph. Yeah. Well, but the Xenomorph... The, isn't that the ship? Aren't they on the... No, that's planet? not But the, the Xenomorph makes, See, that's what I didn't get. And, like, what are, you, what are they... Why would you make a movie and have that thing there if it's not going to be the ship from the first movie? I'm not, like... I, I, you know? I don't like, think it's point? necessarily... You could define it as a prequel, but yeah. it's obvious that they had their hand really yes. deep in the pot yes. of Alien to a, a negative to the movie. But... The like, let's talk xenomorphs for a second. Whatever the xenomorph infects, the baby comes out as. So I don't understand why people get are all butt hurt about this engineer xenomorph at the end of the movie because like that that's legit. That's still within canon. The the problem I had I for that yeah. was that it felt so convoluted mm-hmm. that I was like, this is outrageous, and I like it's like they're. They had an end result, yeah. and they said, okay, we're going to get to that end result How with these 20 different pieces. <laughs> it, it wasn't as... It, it felt yeah, convoluted. That's the best word to put and it. Big, and, the, and the gods that created us are just like, hey, we're here. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the things, the things that annoy me about Smash. Prometheus are the ambiguity and confusing nature of the properties of the black goo. What does it do? What is its purpose? It does, like, 30 different things. It, like, turns worms into snake monsters that fuck your face. And then if you, like, get infected by that, you turn into a zombie monster that folds backwards onto itself and has superpowers. (laughs) 
Right? Yeah. If you're if you're an engineer and you drink it, you disintegrate and turn into DNA strands that inseminate life on Earth, yeah. apparently. Like I, I blame Dave. No Lindelof. guarantee this was all the same black goop. Yeah, no, but, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you and if you're the and if you're the Tom Hardy wannabe actor in that movie yeah. and you're infected by black goop and then you have sex with your girlfriend, then she gets pregnant with some sort of squid monster. What is the rules of this goo? Nanobots. No, this is not Metal Gear. <laughs> it's um, little Michael nanobots. Fassbender. No, see, that doesn't bother me at all because they never like dive into it and try to say this is what it does. They just it kind of just starts. But, but, there's, shit but up. there's so much up in the air that it's to the point of being an irritant. And yeah. as to, just to compare it to the thing, it has a very natural rule for the unknown. It has a rule like to there's what rules. the thing does. And this black goo is literally just like magic. It just does it's, everything. It's plot. It's, See, oh, it's that, plot. That never bothered me. Oh, it bothers the yeah, it bothers matter. Matter. And it's act, like, as Sam said, b- blame it on Damon Lindelof. I was a huge fan of Lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I loved season one. Season two was okay. Season three was worse. When did and then you figure out like, that the mist was a bear? Not a bear. The mist was a human. Yeah, I didn't watch Lost Past yeah. episode four. And, that, and that's what it is. It, and, and you see it in Prometheus. You see Damon Lindelof get his weird little fingers into it. And just, like, make all these kind of, like, plot pieces that come together in a way that doesn't make any sense. And they all can feed into each other if you pull strings that aren't there. Hmm. They should have just they, what, they should have just given that script to, like, some nerds and been like, what do you guys think? Like, is this good? And they would have been like, what? Well, no. Justin, what's the name of the, of the screenwriter who wrote the original Prometheus script? Fuck if I know. Yeah, that guy is... Yeah, yeah. It seems like he... They had it going, and then for whatever reason... The script like, is out there on the web, and yes, you can read it. and it's isn't that really one have good. a lot of parallels? I read this one article about this guy who... Uh, the Prometheus and the parallels to the journey of Christ. Um, where that was the whole thing about what? rebirth. Yeah. And that and was, what? like, the big theme of it. Because that's what that the whole movie... Sense. That's what the whole movie is about, right? What? And, like, even it's just, like, rebirth? the fact that the, engi- about the engineer at the beginning of the movie kills himself to plant the seed that lets life grow from it. It's a very religious aspect and then to it. Wayland is obsessed with death and dying and wanting to live forever. And then even just the whole, um, the cutting into, um, her was along the lines of a virgin birth just like, um, Jesus. And... Except she got that from having sex. It's true, but it's the whole thing of that. that this isn't like her baby. See, as you guys are picking this thing apart, I'm like, maybe Prometheus sucks. Because to me, it was just about a space adventure where they found some fucking black goo. And uh, I just helped him crash the spaceship. Michael Fassbender got his head ripped off and the girl went out for vengeance. Um, uh, and uh, I feel like I, I feel like the, the, just the convoluted nature of it has to do with the good old guy who messed yeah. up Lost. See, no, no, and like, the original Alien was really just truck drivers in space that it was. get a creepy organism on board and like, oh, fuck. Yeah. That's it's all in, it was. And they should have gone simple for Prometheus. Yeah, you know? yeah it just got too complicated. See, I, uh, I, I really did like Prometheus. Yeah, I like, did, I don't but hate a it. big part of it, I will admit, was the cast carried it. Like, I, I love the N- Naomi Numi Rapace. I don't yeah, know how to yeah, say Naomi it. Rapace. Um, I like her. I love Michael Fassbender. Um, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Charlize Theron. The guy who wants to be Tom Hardy. The no, guy who wants to be Tom Hardy. <laughs> well, I wasn't guy so sold on him. Actually, do you know the biggest problem with Prometheus the is? The biggest problem. The biggest problem with Prometheus. Is you don't get to see Idris Elba and Charlize the visual Theron. Effects. No, is the guy <laughs> Is the, um, the guy who is mapping out the caves gets lost. It's true. Oh, yeah. That... What do you in mean? The, like, the guy who's like in charge of like with the, little, the little robots that yeah. map the tunnels, he gets lost. And yeah. like whenever I go see a movie, how does that happen? When I see a movie, no tunnels. When, when I see a movie yeah. in theater, I usually just go and I enjoy it. Right, I'm not picking apart a movie You're when not I see film it in theaters. It. But that one, I was like, what? This <laughs> doesn't it, make so any sense. So what Prometheus was to me ultimately was uh, the the big message that I really uh, liked and took from it was that these people went to this place and they ended up meeting their creator. And what a disappointment that must have been that it, they were just like, fuck you, and fucking stabs them, right? It's like meeting God. Yeah, like no guarantee that you're going to get any answers. Yeah. And so that to me was kind of just like, whoa. So I just, I guess I kind of just breezed over all the bullshit. Yeah, but Michael Fassbender's character says that an hour into the movie. Does he? Yeah, he's like, well, why did you make me? And he's like, because we could... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but that's the yeah. thing. And then, and then the day says, "There's so many levels because it's like the humans meet their creators." Yeah. But then you see Michael Fassbender's reaction to his creator meeting their creators, and it's no. just yeah, it's, no, it's and then, crazy. And then David is like, "Can you imagine how disappointed you would be if your creator said that they just made you for fun?" 
along those lines. And he's like, yeah, I want to be Tom Hardy. And I, <laughs> I and, and that's like, just the dialogue like that, it fits into the whole um, religious aspect that was probably there in the original that got twerked. He twerked it. Don't twerked. use that word. He twerked it. No. He was, Tweak, you know. I believe is the no, word. No, he like, twerked it like crazy. He just fucking. Hashtag he twerked twerk it. He put the script down on the table and just shook just, his ass yeah. all over it. You tweak nipples, you twerk <laughs> scripts. <laughs> I'm gonna dive back. Through. Let's get yeah, back, oh, yeah. back to the <laughs> thing. thing. Um, big tangent. I don't have anything much more to say about it. If anyone else wants to, well, we just went on a big rant about what Prometheus means. Do we want to talk if we think if there is anything to take away from? Like I was joking, saying it was about the Cold War and like suspicion, <laughs> and then and I joked AIDS. the AIDS crisis because yeah. of all the blood <laughs> being infected. Although I think the thing was too early for the AIDS crisis. Probably. Yes, it was, wasn't yes. it? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a thing yet. We're not going to talk about the AIDS crisis on the thing, Golden yeah. Shakespeare or Saddam Hussein. We yeah. don't want to open that can of can of worms again. I love Saddam Hussein. <laughs> don't, Justin, you're making it worse. <laughs> you no, know he died, right? What? <laughs> What? Yeah, they made a movie about it. Yeah. <laughs> you can watch it on the internet. <laughs> oh god. Um, <laughs> no, see um I I I I don't think the thing has any deeper meaning. Is it is the agenda of John Carpenter making this movie is he's going to make a fun horror sci-fi I think suspense it's just film about I think it's suspense. Yeah, and I think suspense and, and paranoia. Yeah, and I think it's about paranoia. It, it, it's, really. I think yeah. really the point of it is to bring you into it and make you just as tense being like... It's a lot similar to... The, yeah. I, I would yeah. kind of compare it to like The Mist. Yes. Wouldn't you? Yeah. It's kind of like... the fucking oh, Mist. Yeah, Sam and I love The Mist. Yeah, so you're about don't to don't get into it. No. Oh, I love Tom Welling. The ending was fantastic. The ending was fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, is the Mist the fucking Stephen King one? Yeah, yeah. with yeah, yeah. Tom James. The Jay's ending Superman. is fucking. We're not going to talk about the end in here. We're no. gonna, because we're probably going to be doing. We, it. we should do that. Yeah, yeah. we will. But um, I, that, the whole fucking. Movie we're not. Is... We're not going to go on another tangent. We just got to talk about the thing because we're on a note but here. You know what? The thing is actually how I feel at a work at any job that I hate. It's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing is office politics. <laughs> yeah. It is a constant oppressive fear of I can't speak my mind to anyone because they're all out to get me. Yeah, they're I, all enemies. It's true. And I feel like on uh, back, uh, like Ryan, on your guys' response is that the whole purpose of the thing was to make the audience be just as confused as they were. Yeah. And like take them on that paranoid yeah. ride of it. And it's, it's good that a movie makes you think, but it's not a very heady think. Like, it's not a very high intellectual thought process, but it gets the audience thinking like, oh, who is this? What is going on? You know, who are who is the thing right now? And it gets you. It's not like a a hard thing to work your brain around. It's something accessible for people, but to get them thinking, which is good. I just assume that pretty much everybody except Macready and Childs are things in the movie. Like I just like. Just, well, I pointed out to you a couple who can't be. I, and I agree. But like I'm just saying, as like when I watch it, just because it's one of those things where I get sucked into the movie and I feel that paranoia mm-hmm. that I just don't trust everybody. Of course, because I know the ending, mm-hmm. I just you know those two are on the yeah. Do not like. So in, in towards the end of the movie, there um, when uh, what's his name uh, Blair is the thing and yeah. down in the little basement area and that other black guy whose name I can't remember whoa oh um, um wanders off Fuchs I think so no. is it Fuchs no. Fuchs was, it, Fucks no it was Fuchs was his friend then. it was Nalls yeah. Nalls okay, yeah. okay. TK um, Carter that's how you knew his name. oh my god <laughs> Nalls okay. out of this Nalls, Nalls wanders off does makes Nallzilla does he get thinged oh yeah or is he just like looking and, around and then the thing shows up and he's like oh shit and then Kurt Russell just walk. blows him up <laughs> hypothetically it doesn't matter because he gets blown up even and if what, what is Kurt Russell's body count in this movie that's a good question we should have we should have yeah we should he killed uh, he killed uh, how many things Clark. how many things and how many thing, how many things did he kill and how many humans he killed one he kill? human for sure no. two humans possibly if Nalls <laughs> was not thinged <laughs> he killed the guy tied to the couch Yep, and effectively you can count him and, Clark. and uh, him and Childs. Yeah. He killed them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as for what I think happened to Nolds when he left, yeah. I feel like that thing that we saw at the end, the super thing, was just the amalgamation of the three bodies that he just consumed but they were and everything else. Heads. He was basically celebrating what he's become. He's like, look at all the different faces I found. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's like Joan Rivers. He's just like, join me, my pretty. <laughs> Actually, if there's one, Together, if there's one the scene that I don't like in the movie, it's that final scene when it's like the graboid running towards him. That's the only thing that, to me that doesn't fit with everything else that we've you seen. You think it's too much him. of an action-y scene? Yes, that's exactly it. I don't okay. know why, but like, I, it's not a bad scene, but to me, it's that if I had to choose a scene that I didn't like well, in it. Well, that scene is a big problem in the movie because it got cut way down in post-production because there was... Yeah, Stop the, going the dog, for it. the dog crawling out of the stomach and like moving around, and oh, there's cool. all these shots. Of it was it. a yeah. way bigger sequence. But and that's the, on the special, the special features. Yeah, I'm not like, on the Blu-ray. I don't oh, think. No. You got to get the DVD. Oh, but no, laser no. disc. You have that, do you? I, I've got I have DVD. a yeah. laser disc of it, not, <laughs> not the special edition one, but, but I have uh, the DVD too. So. Uh, we want to talk about the cast or anything? The performances? Oh, uh, like, music. Let's talk about the music. The music, Anyo. which we erroneously we have to redact something from the last podcast. John Carpenter did not do the score for this. Uh, it was by how do you say this name? Ennio Morricone. Morricone. Very good. Um, <laughs> who is quite prolific from my IMDb research, as we've seen. He's done quite a bit of work, but it's a really good score. Um, I will say you can. There definitely does seem to be a Carpenter's hands in the soundtrack because yes. it does sound a lot like his music. Actually, and it doesn't sound too much like. Morricone. No. But Paris? yeah, he probably just went to him and was like, "Hey, compose it with this fucking sound yeah, effect." Yeah. I come, think he collaborated with him, but there's probably a lot of him. Come to think, yeah. though, can you recall any music in the movie besides the main theme? No, which is what the makes movie. the theme amazing. Yeah. Like Kind of like Cloverfield. Ho- good horror movies use uh, atmosphere to build tension, in my opinion. Not music or high strings or anything. Um, or like sound cues, jumpy, sudden loud noises. Um, and Cloverfield had a theme song. One theme. I mean, there's no music in that entire movie. I mean, except for, like, parties, if they're at a party. But, um, <laughs> when HUD is filming. Yeah. HUD, heads up display. I caught that. I didn't get theater. it. Clever. Yeah. I was like... Oh. It's funny. Justin um, hates it. But, like, there's there's one theme, and it like it, it's good, and it only plays during credits. And um, the thing's a bit different where it plays at a few very tense parts during the movie. But I think the thing kind of like Jaws builds that tension because it's slow and yes. it's kind of like a heartbeat yes. yeah. to me it sounds a little bit like if you had like old hospital equipment and you were listening to a heartbeat dun dun yeah. dun dun and then like it'll start getting you're making faster. me you're making me edit out tons of t- uh, tapping that I'm probably not going to have oh you <laughs> fucking piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> okay um, that yes. actually is perfect to what I want to talk about for our subject for today's uh um, podcast, but we'll wrap this up. Let's start with the Golden Shakespeare nominations for the thing. Uh, I'll start first this year because I I knew what mine this, this year. year. <laughs> well, this year next year I start first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I thought Godzilla was made in 1984. In yeah. 1980, um, I was listening to that. I was like, He's really stuck on 1984. I'm, I'm messed up. So uh, my Golden Shakespeare nomination for the thing 1982 is the best jump scare in a movie ever. And that is when they're testing the blood samples, and it just happens so between who you think the like who actually is going to be infected with it. It's just this this random guy with curly hair that's kind of just nondescript in the movie, and it like just comes out. It's in the middle of a line. It interrupts him. Yeah. It's just such a good. It's it's really a good misdirect. No, the that. best jump scare ever. That's probably come to think. I thought you were making a joke and saying it was the dog jump. No, at the no. beginning. <laughs> no, it's definitely the blood test one. Even though, like, they did a great parody of that in South Park. Yeah, with the uh, cooties, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. or the was those of the lights. I don't even remember. Was uh, I think it was the lights. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Sam, do you have a yeah, nomination? I'll, I'll go with uh, best performance by a uh, by a husky dog. Is yeah. it a husky? Is he husky? He's yeah. a husky. He was wolf. great in it. Yeah. He was yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, the dog in the opening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my nomination for the Golden Shakespeare. For the thing, nineteen eighty two is uh, the Golden Shakespeare for the best face fucking. <laughs> yes, By I hope. Hand. I really hope that one does not get another nomination. <laughs> oh, you gotta watch. You know what? You gotta watch just, just before dawn. Just before yeah, dawn. Yeah, a girl, that a girl kills a, a mutated twin with her fist. All right, that that, that would throat. classify as face fucking. Yeah. That's yeah, throat fisting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. James, do you have a nomination? You know, I did, but it totally left my mind when I was blown away by Patrick. So you're gonna jump on his then? No, no, no. <laughs> you can have my other one. No, no. <laughs> the, be- the best comeback. Oh, the best comeback. Oh, yeah. oh, no, yeah. that well, oh, damn, that wasn't gonna be mine. Mine, mine was gonna be a uh, best uh, 
that best black white buddy cop movie. Oh yeah, it is yeah. a good black white buddy cop movie. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I will I will take that back and say best comeback when Kurt Russell throws a dynamite. He's just like, yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> that is a good comeback. Yeah, um, it's a very good comeback. It's way better than no. I came back to stop you. Oh god, that was terrible. What was that from? Like, the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> you blocked what it was that from? Memory. Was that possibly a Batman movie? God damn, that's a dumb fucking movie. You must have been up all night thinking, what is the line? I gotta think of something. <laughs> and then he wakes up in the middle like, I got it. This is the perfect No, I came back to stop you. <laughs> this will settle his ash. <laughs> um, I just remember when, I, when that happened in the theater, I was just like, really? Yeah. I was like, that's it? That's all you got, Batman? <laughs> yeah. He well, I mean, there's really the not face. much more to Batman. <laughs> yeah, no, like, he, you should have just gone pure bats. Just punch him in pure the face. Bats. Yeah. Pure bats. Just punch him in the face. No talking. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah, we'll punch him. Talking. Yeah. Uh, for, I'm pretty sure we're all going to have a very similar answer for this. But Patrick, do you recommend the thing? I recommend the thing a lot. James? Uh, I will give it a strong recommendation. Sam? No. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about the 2011 one. <laughs> but if we're talking about the 1982 one, yes, for sure. But um, even with that one, you can give it like a ho hum. You know, like, if it's on TV, watch it. Yeah, if you're if you're bored on like a Saturday morning, could you just imagine you watch how much on Netflix? If you're like if you're in the climax of Clockwork Orange and they have your eyes open and you know you're forced to watch something, watching the thing 2011 probably wouldn't be. Yeah, that it bad. wouldn't be that bad. No. Um, and I also highly recommend it. I love this movie. It's fantastic. It's from the the great time when. You know, you could make a movie like that in Hollywood, and it would probably be a lot harder to do that nowadays. Yes, to get, a, to get a studio like Universal to say yes to a movie that has all male casts of no main stars, like no famous people. Well, we and the ending is such a downer, and it's like we almost had that with Silent Hill, the first one, and then they're like, "Oh, stick Sean Bean in it." There's too many women. Yeah. And that's that's one thing I like about smaller like 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 places like Fox Searchlight where they do mm-hmm. those smaller things is that there's a, now in like a studios that do movies like this yeah. because back then it was. Pretty but do you hard. know what I think as a whole the whole Hollywood culture and this is kind of a tangent but I think the executives maybe have clued in that when you let the filmmakers do their thing they produce stronger work that makes more money which is what they care about I think they finally are starting to learn that'd that. be nice yeah. I, don't you see there yeah. has well there also has been a trend of a lot more directors producing their own yeah. movies which is a huge hand in that moving that way I imagine yeah I, I can't see any world where that is not a good thing like the, I guess the model is the people who hold the money is like if it was up to the artistic people the sky would be the limit and they would have the biggest budget ever and it would be ridiculous yeah. but filmmakers and actors and the, everyone involved are only go, setting out to make a good movie no one sets out to make a bad movie you know Ed Wood didn't set out to make you the worst bowl. movie ever no, he loves his movies. Bull. Yeah, he loves them. Yeah. He'll, he'll fight you over them. I know, yeah. but but I'll fight you, Bull. <laughs> Maybe not. He's very good. Yeah. Uh, He's probably listening to this. Yeah. Hopefully. I Me too. Hopefully. Um, so the subject for this week is what makes a good horror movie? And James was actually starting to go on that tangent. Yeah. Um, I hate horror movies. I do. I hate All right, I hate All right so I guess next 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 <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> no, to no, make no. a good but horror that, movie. But this is, this is um, I, I hate horror movies. Whenever my friends are like, oh, let's go see this horror movie, fucking whatever, Jeepers Creepers and Sidious. I'm like, fuck that. That's stupid, right? But every now and again, I reluctantly go. Uh, and I sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised because it takes for me a lot to make a good horror movie. And a good horror to me movie to me is more about tension and, like, that edge of your seat gripping just, like, what is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all in the timing. I don't... I really hate horror movies where it's just excessive gore or, like, really loud, jumpy sound cues. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, like, now and again, you know, you get, like, the stupid 3D effects where fucking something gets chucked at your face out of nowhere. Yeah. Wait, Tom, that's terrifying. It almost hits you. It <laughs> yeah. almost hit you. Yeah, but it's okay because it hit the guy in the seat above you. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> right? But, See, no, yeah. so... To me, um, uh, a good horror movie really draws on its atmosphere um, and just, uh, just the, the, the tension, the atmosphere and the tension. But that's like a really broad comment. Is how do you sculpt that atmosphere? I, I actually have a very specific thing to me what makes a good horror movie. It's Go um, isolation. You see it in The Thing. 
There's two different kinds of isolation. There's physical isolation. They're mm-hmm. trapped in Antarctica with this thing that can kill them and will kill them. Yeah. Then it goes even further with... No em- guarantee. They never gave it the chance to be friends. That's true. Um, and then it goes even further with emotional isolation, which mm-hmm. you can see in movies like Rosemary's Baby. Yes. Where there's this character who is by themselves dealing with this horrifying thing mm-hmm. around them. Mm-hmm. And then you get a con- like um, for a movie like uh, Jacob's Ladder, which is one of my favorite horror movies, oh, yeah, is a combination of both of them. Yeah. There's this guy who's by himself facing this world that's going against him and he's stuck in it he can't get out of it yeah. like this nightmare world that he's living um, in uh, one of those things maybe a, a subset of that that ties in I think a th- really important thing for horror movies is to make sure that your protagonist has no power or can't control their surroundings yes if, if a person is empowered you feel like they have a shot but you, in a horror movie they can't have a hope in hell because that's why it's scary they're treading water you know yeah yeah out. Another thing for me that just I really need in a movie for a horror movie to not just fucking bore me out of my mind and think it's garbage is it needs to be very real. And I know that seems kind of weird from the thing, but part of the thing that makes the it's, thing very real is real. the real yeah. prop. Oh, it's totally grounded. Right, it's very it's a very yeah. realistic movie. But for... that's the um that's when, I, I hate when it's just super out there like spiritual witchcraft or what the fuck ever. Yeah. yeah, well. Okay, so you say real. So, like, I take that to mean, like, treating it tonally. Like, t- yes. th- taking it seriously. Yes. So you can, But you can do that with supernatural stuff, like Poltergeist. Poltergeist exactly. is a supernatural well, yeah, 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 movie, no, no. but it's very serious. No, but I just good. mean, like, you yeah. don't, like... Sure, Poltergeist. No one's fucking throwing a wand and it's, like, casting a spell of evil or something. Um, James, but, I have a serious question for you. What? Do you think Harry Potter <laughs> is a horror, horror series? <laughs> have you seen the villain? <laughs> He's terrifying. Yeah, Ralph Fiennes. I never. I, I didn't, Rafe Fiennes. I didn't. I didn't get past the first one. I was too afraid when I found out the head was on the back of the other guy. That's scary. scary. Yeah. There's scary. a big snake in the next one. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Um, but no, um, just that. that like, uh, like I was saying about atmosphere and everything. Like the 2011 thing. It started to get on the right path, and it did a few things better, but it loses me in the fact that the thing is CG. Mm-hmm. It loses yeah. a part of its believability. It's because you start to be like, oh, that's not real. That's yeah. some guy fucking around on a computer. It's yeah. And you imagine the actor running away from a tennis ball yeah. on a stick. Yeah. 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 Well, so, so, some it's, people... it's like you watch like the old one. <laughs> You watch the old one, and, it, and it's like, you know that that was there. Like, you can just tell that, like, actual film lights were hitting that. And, yeah. like, guys, like, sweated making this thing. Well, know? like, one of the scariest... It's, like, it's yeah. got one of the scariest scenes, uh, to me, in a horror movie, is when they're performing CPR, and the chest yeah. just opens up. Like, that feels more real than it mm-hmm. would if it was just, like, a CG thing, and the, the guy has throwing digital fucking squibs out of his the arms. The other thing yeah. is, is you had to get it on the day back then because you had limited time. You had to shoot it. You had to get it in front of the camera and you couldn't fake it. Really. Yeah. So you had to know exactly what you were doing. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. just be like, I guess we'll shoot it this way and then uh, they'll just CGI it in post and but, fix it. So it's like, you had to be talented to really get it. And so, Carpenter is like, he's really, he's one of the best, right? Yeah. So, But are we to the point now in this day and age where... It is actually cheaper to just do CG yes. post production. It's like we'll catch it like it's that's half of the Amazing Spider Man series. It's like we'll get the rest of the movie later. Let's just get I this. Th- I think that's yeah. I don't think it's even necessarily cheaper um, to maybe like make it and all that. Like it still is expensive. Yeah. But I think exactly what you're saying. They can do it and then just be like, well, that's just something we'll worry about later. Let's well, just get the actor's stuff shot. I know you guys hate whenever I talk about robots, but let's take the first Transformers movie, for example. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They built one, or maybe two props, I could be mistaken, but the only real prop they use in that entire movie is for one scene where they're fucking towing like a frozen bumblebee out of uh, some dam. Out of the L.A. River. Yeah. Um, and that's the one real robotic prop they made for that. And I think maybe they had an Optimus hand or leg or something, but I could be wrong about that. I mean, next to the cars, right? Yeah. But for the actual robots. Brought to you by and, Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just that whole movie. Could you imagine trying to make a real prop for something like yeah, that? Yeah, but that's different. Like that's, that couldn't work. No, it, saying, it, it could. No, like, you, you can't see, build no, no, robots! No, no, but you see, like, the stop-motion T-Rex in uh, Jurassic Park and stuff, right? Like, it's been done. You can do it. 
but it's to the point now where it's cheaper and you can honestly like it looks like absolute bunghole uh for something like that i mean maybe transformers isn't a good example because of the complexity of the robots well that was ilm like they're the top studio yeah that's a bad example but um when they're pulling bumblebee out of the river you know just you can tell it's just like a solid prop that's hinged in like four places it looks like shit it's way easier to do cg in this day and age I, yeah. I would actually, it's, from the sounds of it, that description, I haven't seen the movie, I turned it off in the first <laughs> 10 seconds. I don't give a shit what the script says, if Peter Cullen can read anything to me, I'd listen to it. Um, but, I feel like that might have been, um, if, because, it's like, it's, it's the whole thing of, if it's actually in front of you, yeah. or if it's fake. If it's in front of you and it looks like shit, that's not the fault of it being in front of you. That's the fault of the people who made it. Yeah. Because it's like, it's there. You yeah. know, it's real. It's it's actually just a hunk of something that's being lifted out of the water. Also, so I just kind of thought of something. Um, just Doubt it. Back to props. Um, maybe a part of what makes these older horror movies better horror movies to me, like I was talking about the realism. Uh, when you think of doing a film nowadays, you aren't really limited by realistic props or special effects, what you can do. Kind of the sky is the limit yeah. with CG, right? Yeah. Back in the day, and made that, for the thing. That's why you get things like Transformers. Yeah. They're so big. But a, a lot of it is, it's kind of like, uh, it's too much. Yeah. I think we're kind of like, like there's just too, it's everything's, there's so much happening that there's really nothing happening, you know? It's nothing like, needs to they happen. They throw shit on the screen yeah. and you're just like, why did that happen? Wow, look, look at all those amazing but, but robots. Just, but it's like, but really it's like there's, this isn't really, there's nothing to it. I remember there's when, nothing underneath it. When Jumanji came out <laughs> yeah. and I was floored by the stampede, yeah. right? Because yeah. back then it was like so exciting but now they can do so much that it's like not as exciting anymore. Yeah, because right? you've seen it all. It's like, like it's like oh, it's kind of like yeah. an arms race that going nowhere. Yeah, it's 100%. like how you always yeah. have to masturbate to nastier porn. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's thank true. you. You guys took a long <laughs> pause. No. Um, well, I had to think about. it. I was like, yeah, that is a lot like that. You yeah. just start with normal stuff, and all of a sudden, I, I I don't remember the day I started watching hardcore, but I remember when I was like a little kid, and I was like, ooh, that's real. That's, yeah. Uh, that's not kissing. CGI. I'm yeah. just on CG porn now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's no but maybe even there. gone to that point yeah. now. <laughs> but uh, practical effects to me are what make a better horror movie, yeah. yep. be it in the makeup or the acting or just the actors performing stunts also, as opposed like, to CG. Like, Silence. Yes. Silence. Silence. A lot like of horror atmosphere. movies just atmosphere. don't do that nowadays. No. Like they think, oh, if it's really loud, people will be scared. It's or like, if it's, oh. it's really quiet for a little, then really loud. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. Justin yeah. said, though, the isolation, right? Yeah. Like when you say you're being chased by a serial killer and you just stop to catch your breath and you don't hear a thing, if you, that's if, scary. Yeah. If you want to be, if you want to write, like you could easily uh, make a English essay about it. How it's like. Even the lack of sound is the isolation of those mm-hmm. senses, right? Oh if you want God. to be like that. Um, but on the flip side of that, there's this movie that came out recently that 75% of it is really good, and they actually did really good music for it. It's the movie Sinister. And oh, yeah. the, the It's a terrible movie. And it falls apart in the and last exactly. third act. 75% of it is great. When there's just watching it, the yeah. serial killer the tapes. The first time seeing it, I was like into it for the first like hour and 15. Yeah. I was like... When I was really, it, you get really on edge when Ethan Hawke is in his office doing that investigation yeah. work. You're like, oh, don't look at one of the pictures because you're going to see like Slender Man in it. Yeah, yeah. and it, it works so well um, in those, just the like, just those tapes are some of the best scary stuff I've ever seen. Like just the one where it's um the family getting hung by the tree is no, the, that, that one's one, creepy. The but the one that really one. gets me that that like but that one's like Fuck. even like Which a jump scare. The lawnmower one. But the one that gets that me one. is when oh. he, they're fil- he's filming the family on the beach having the picnic. Yeah. And then it just cuts to that weird song, and he's circling around the car, yeah, and they're very was, well like battling the garage, one. and they're just all unconscious inside. Then it just goes to a stationary shot, and a Molotov is thrown in it. No. It's just, it's creepy. It's I scary. Because it se- seems real. Very it's real. Visceral. And it's, it's, I think you would like the first 75% of the oh, movie. Yeah. The last 25% turns into a, like a mm-hmm. magic, scary thing that's really stupid. Yeah, because like on the Involving flip side, scary children. the original like Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. yeah. that's not a quiet movie. No. But it's like a visceral movie. The, the, and the, 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 it's like, a stealth chainsaw. Yeah. The, the, but there's no blood in it at all. The no, scene when they're no. at the dinner table at the yeah. end, and you feel like you're going crazy with them. Like, yeah, it's, it's like 
am I really watching this? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. yeah. Or the scene where he stumbles through the door and he gets hit on the head with a hammer yeah. and then the yeah, door slams. Out of yeah. the it, it's violence out of nowhere and like mm-hmm. Yeah. It matters. I don't know. So, I was I was gonna say backtracking though, when we were talking about like practical effects versus CG, um there's something to be said and horror movies are kind of the expert of this, is that um constraints breed creativity. And when the sky is the limit, and you can make a fucking weasel fly out of someone's ass and explode into a firework, as which we, would be great. As we <laughs> will see in Transformers 4. Yeah. <laughs> the, you, there, there's it's nothing not stopping you from doing anything. That. But when you have constraints on you, and you're like, there's like light concerns and budgetary reasons and practical effects, blah, blah, blah. You have to get creative. You have to be creative, and it will always give you the better answer, rather than the, well, we'll just phone it in, and the weasel will come out like this. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So... Having limitations and constraints is much better for anything. So we should just convince Hollywood to give away all their money. No, just start from scratch. No, because I really want to see Transformers. Oh, oh they should do like uh, Ralph Klein bucks and give every filmmaker Klein bucks. Klein yeah. bucks. Yeah. We should like here in Alberta. This is how we do what it. What the fuck is a Klein buck? Don't you remember when Ralph Klein bucks. gave you? Was it two hundred or five hundred? I don't know. My mom stole my Klein bucks. <laughs> Ralph Klein gave you five hundred. Did your parents steal your five? No, my parents wouldn't steal that. They would give it you to me. It's probably, no, probably, probably. I probably, 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 probably just forgot about it. Because of all my my brain problems, I lost a lot of my youth. Yeah. Yeah. Your seizures? Yeah, my your, seizures. Your seizures. No, uh, yeah, the Alberta government, <laughs> Ralph Klein gave out $500 to every Alberta resident. Because he was drunk and was like, yeah, fuck him, write him checks. Sign this. <laughs> yeah. he, he wanted to practice his new signature. So thought, <laughs> what a better way than writing, like, signing a bunch of checks. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, restrictions breed creativity and, totally. and also the dictum, less is more. Yeah. Exactly. Which, which Huge. Was like, it, we actually um, that was a big thing in um, the Conjuring. One of James Wan he did Sinister and Wal- and uh, he didn't the do Con- Sinister, but I think he was involved in it. You know, he didn't direct. it. Oh, he didn't direct it. Oh, no. I thought he directed that one. He did Insidious and then uh, Conjuring. I forget. Who yeah, did Sinister. Sinister was the guy who, if I remember correctly, was the guy who did the Diary, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yes. Oh, did I say um, in- Sinister? I didn't. Insid- I meant in- I'm in Insidious. Yes. In- yeah. Conjuring. Insidious, yeah. another good movie for seventy five percent of it. Yes. Yeah. and then it all <laughs> melts away no. at the end. Except for the very ending, the, like the plot twist ending. I haven't, I, I haven't watched part two. I thought I could... that was like pretty close to a modern Poltergeist. Yeah, still not. Well, not it, it draws it draws so much on it. Yeah, you know, but still not. does not touch even to like the, the goofy crew of like paranormal investigators yeah, exactly. who come in. Yeah. Um, but it's weird that you guys bring that up because I was going to suggest for my weekly recommendation. Oh, don't get there yet. We're no, gonna, no, 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 don't get we're there. Not there yet. But um, but but in those two movies, which have been pretty, I think agreed the most successful. I didn't form, see the second one yet. I uh, don't. Yet. I wouldn't even. Yeah. What, what's the point? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. The um, the Conjuring and Insidious, those are agreed to be like the best like paranormal movies to come out in a long time yes. in like the last like decade or so, kind of. I, uh, I liked Insidious when we saw that in theaters. Yeah. That was pretty damn I scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those, but The Conjuring I think is better than Insidious for my tastes. Mm-hmm. And that movie has a lot of long silences and like uh, just you know people being in the house just yeah. I really want to. By the way, how stupid is it that that movie's rated R? There's nothing in that. There's nothing in it that needs to That's be bizarre. Radar. That's very it bizarre. It says it's radar. Poltergeist is PG. Yeah, Poltergeist is more like violent than that. And we, Poltergeist has someone pulling their face, face off. off. Yeah. When yeah. we talk about that, was the, I say the whole conspiracy theory that it's because Spielbergo was on it. So he, oh, really? Yeah. He probably he was the producer. It. Oh, yeah, yeah right. so he, he Well, you know what his... happened? That's actually because Gremlins was also pretty harsh and it still got a PG. They had, and because of that, in Poltergeist, they invented PG thirteen. Mm, yes, yes. Because they were yeah. like, it's not quite R. It's not really PG. We'll give it PG. That's funny but... that we were going to go this down this yeah. Gremlins rat hole. But I, I remember hearing that um, one of the producers on the movie or an executive at the studio sent in, uh, sent a letter to Spielberg and said, "We love this movie, but we're not hot on these Gremlins things. Can we can we get them out of the movie?" <laughs> <laughs> and Spielberg sent him a note back saying, that's a really funny joke. I'm still laughing thinking about it. Good one, Dan. And sent it back and he never made the recommendation again. That was funny. Um, <laughs> oh, man. As for the Golden Shakespeare, we're probably not going to do another horror movie for a bit, but come October, we're yeah. going to do four weeks of horror. Oh, absolutely. And we're going to like focus on... We might, we might do like one horror movie between them, but like October, we're going to go nuts and dive deep. We're the not Harry doing... Potter series. <laughs> We're not doing a uh, beer fest in recognition of Oktoberfest. In... Oh, fuck the Germans. <laughs> like every every <laughs> just, national land. Just terms. kidding, I am you German. Just oh. lost half our audience. No, it's, it's one of those jokes that I'm, I'm poking fun at myself. 
<laughs> oh no. Uh, James, you, I interrupted you so rudely, your weekly recommendation. Uh, I was going to actually recommend The Conjuring in the vein of scary films. To me, uh, The Conjuring was a very well done horror movie, built a lot of tension, used a lot of practical effects, even things that were CG, like people getting, or maybe not CG, but thrown around. Um, I remember there's one scene where one girl's getting like uh, carried around by her hair, which is probably the one scene that stood out uh, the most to me is kind of like hokey, but the uh, very ending exorcism was just so fucking intense to me, mm-hmm. and I, I just I loved it. And like that was one of those films where Patrick and uh, Ryan were like, "We're gonna go see the Conjuring." I was like, "No, guys, let's go watch something with robots and explosions." Like, what's the closest thing to a Michael Bay movie? And they're like, we're seeing The Conjuring. I was like, okay. And I walked out of there and I was like, awesome. But it was also really cool because it was like, when was it take place? Like in the 70s? Yeah, it was a period movie. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of cool that they were true to that. Like even, because things like, that will really bother me in films as well and can destroy a film for me is when they do a period piece and you'll see like a 2000 vehicle roll up in a 70s film. I hear that's a lot of, that's a problem for a lot of car lovers. That happens quite often. It is, all, oh, but like every fucking vehicle, like they, the dad drives up in a Dodge Monaco and I was like, sweet! And like an asshole cop shows up in like a 69 Fastback Mustang nice. and he's chewing like asshole cop gum and I don't know. <laughs> and so like little things in it brand. were so well done that don't even lend to the horror aspect of it. Yeah. That overall as a movie it is just very good. And the makeup, especially like the bruising on the wife as she's getting possessed, is just oh, it's fucking fantastic. So the story the moral of the story is James likes the movie because of the cars in it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick, do you have a recommendation for the week of what people should watch? So James is riffing on horror movies because we watch a thing. So I'm going to riff. Should like, we all do a horror I movie? So. No, no, yeah. I, no, I'm not doing a horror I, movie. I got well, one. too late. No, I don't want to recommend a horror movie. I don't even like it. Well, disregard Patrick's recommendation. <laughs> no, it's really, it's, it's really good. It's really good. This doesn't count this week. No, mine counts. It does. Um, so riffing off the thing as the common theme, mine is a, another Kurt Russell movie. Oh, that's oh, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it's this movie called Dark Blue, starring Kurt Russell, and it was I think it came out in two thousand and two, and it stars uh, Kurt Russell and Scott Speedman, and it's based off of the uh, L.A. riots, the Rodney, um, the the police, the what were they called? Rodney King, the Rodney King riots in L.A., mm. and it's um it's kind of this uh uh L.A. It's kind of like um L.A. Noir or what's that what's what's that one with a uh, Guy Pierce and um. Russell Crowe. Oh, L.A. Confidential. LA, it's kind of like L.A. Confidential, it's like an, except not period, but it's an L.A. crime story where um, Russell Crow, um, Kurt Russell is one of these you know good old boy cops, and he's you know kind of doing things the way that they've always done, and he's got the, like, this rookie partner, and he's showing him the ropes, and um, they're kind of trying to track down this case, and at the same time of all this, the case going on, there's the escalating tension of L.A. of the black-white tensions with the Rodney King trial. And then for the climax of the film, the riots happen, and which coincides with the climax of the investigation of the story and Kurt Russell and Scott Seidman going after their perp. Okay. And it's a, it's a really good movie, and Russell Crowe sports a beautiful flow, just yeah. a gorgeous mullet. And uh, if you love Russell Crowe, oh, damn it, I Kurt hate Russell. Russell. Kurt Russell. It's my fault. It, it is your fault. <laughs> you, you, with the insider, it's true. Yeah. Uh, if you like Kurt Russell... It's, or you like cop movies. Even if you like Russell Crowe. You'll probably Even if you like, like Russell Crowe. Uh, or, yeah, watch Dark Blue. It's a I'm, really I'm, good movie. That's I'm, one of those ones that I always saw on the shelf, like, over the years. And I've always been like, I want to see that one. And I just never you got never. to I'm, it. Yeah. You should. Yeah, I'm really glad cool. you recommended another Kurt Russell thing because I definitely thought going into this, this whole podcast for me was going to be about Kurt Russell and how much I love him. But <laughs> I, I don't know. You guys got me talking about other stuff. I love Kurt Russell, though. Big yeah. Trouble in Little China. Oh, fantastic. Another good one with him and John Carpenter. Yeah. 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 So I, I think it, oh. it's been like five movies they've done together or something. Yeah, Escape from New York and L.A. The Would Thing. You? Trouble. What else? Uh, no. been one more. I can't remember. I was close. It was interesting though when they were when uh, Carpenter was doing the thing. He um, showed the script to uh, Kurt Russell and he's like, "What do you think?" And Kurt Russell was like, "Because they were creative partners at the time." He's like, "Oh, this is a good script." Blah blah blah. And uh, Carpenter asked Russell to help him cast the movie. And the reason why Kurt Russell is McCready in the movie is because they couldn't find a guy to play McCready. Mm. And so then John Carpenter was like. <sighs> Kurt, will you just do it? And he was like, and, oh, gee, shucks, <laughs> I guess so. But yeah, that's how they cast him. Was, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Sam, do you have a recommendation? For the yeah, I, I, you know, I might as well recommend another horror movie since we've been talking about James Wan. 
so much. I'll go with oh, one yeah. of his underappreciated ones called Dead Silence. Yeah, that it one's came good. out in 2007. And it's about uh, this guy who's... This isn't really a spoiler because it happens in the first scene. His wife gets killed. A random <gasps> ventriloquist doll shows up at the house. And then he goes out for Chinese food. Comes home and she's dead and her tongue's been removed from her mouth. And he goes on a big, long investigation as to where this doll came from. And it leads back to his hometown or something. And there's this whole ghost story behind it with this woman who was a ventriloquist that... Um, had a theater back in the day and you know some shit went down and all the townspeople attacked her it's kind of like Candyman, how he got like attacked and then now has become a ghost so it's cool uh yeah it i don't think it really got a lot of buzz at the time it, i feel I've like it would have heard of it it would have gotten I it think was it because it wasn't saw yeah and i think it would do a lot better if it got released today because people are big on the conjuring and insidious and it fits kind of nicely with those movies do you think though because of but because of the ending of that movie it, it's not in the same vein of those movies, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's it does kind of have a Saw-ish kind of ending. It, it's more in the Saw era of horror movies, I think. Yeah. And if we're going James Wan, then The Conjuring, yeah. uh, Insidious, which I think is where we're still at right now with horror movies, right? Like we're we're in the genre, we're at the time of horror movies where they take themselves very seriously and they're yes. usually supernatural or paranormal mm-hmm. yes. right now. Although we're getting a little worn thin with all these found footage. I think um, I think those are big now, and I think those are kind of like they're right finally now. dying. Yeah. yeah, like Saw had a big heyday, and then it's kind of died. It went the way. Yeah. Justin, what's your recommendation this week? I'm going to keep with my pretentious recommendations, <sighs> and I'm going to further attempt to push my way into that Criterion closet Ooh. by recommending another Criterion. A closet is to... no place for a human being to live. Uh, it is Justin. if it's filled with Criterions. Um. Cretans, you mean? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My recommendation is the film The Night of the Hunter. Uh, You should just go watch it. Robert Mitchum. Love and hate. The whole, yeah, the love and hate on the fingers uh, that comes from there. Uh, It's really good. It's shot. It's just a gorgeous movie to look at, too. Uh, It's black and white, so if you don't like that thing, I don't know what's wrong with you. Seriously, I don't get (laughs) it. They invented color television for a reason. Oh! Oh! (laughs) Yeah, Ugh. what is it? Schindler's List? Uh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. I'm yeah, German. It came out in like the 50s or something too. Yeah, it came uh, out in like it came out around gross. like when Godzilla came out, which we talked about last week. But which watch also it. Black and it's a different kind of horror movie. Um, it probably you probably won't find it scary, but hopefully you like it. I heard the director of Jeepers Creepers likes it. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense, yeah. I think he was the main guy in it, actually. Yeah. I think the character was based on him. That's terrifying. Yeah. Next week, um, to celebrate Patrick's birthday, Yay. even though it I'm will be coming... a quarter of a century. <laughs> You're done. I keep, like, I, I look at it like I'm 25% through my life, but I'm like, know. there's no way I'm living to no. 100, so I'm over 25% I'm through over my 25%. life. You know, actually, they say that within our generation... With our generation. Yeah. Within the our, singularity. People... It is possible that we'll be living till we're 150. That's at least cool. In our time of existence, we'll at least meet someone that will be. That's cool. Because technology will yep. be that good. I don't want to be that old. That'd be fun. I Not when you're th- shitting your pants. That's the, <laughs> yeah, it's the final like work. Yeah. So your age, like, so you can still function at yeah. that point, right? Yeah. Um, I can't wait for robot legs. But okay, next next week um, to celebrate Patrick's birthday and my birthday, um, we're going to be watching Jaws. Yeah. The, um, directed by Steven Spielbergo. S- Steven Spielbergo, Spielbergo starving, starving, starving Robert Shaw, Robert Roy Scheidner, and uh, Richard Dreyfus. And, his, his, and Mr. That Burns. His, that was his nickname back in the day. Starving yeah. Robert Shaw. <laughs> well, then, he hit, it, then, he, yeah. then he hit it big on that Bond movie and he got his first acting job. So even though I said earlier we're not going to watch any horror movies, we're going to kind of watch them. Jaws is a horror adventure. movie. It, thank you, Sam. Yeah. But thank you. It falls into the vein of horror, horrific elements and yes. it has it's scarier than most horror movies as well getting right? eaten by a shark is just like falling asleep in a blender yeah. <laughs> incredibly painful before we go i actually want to tell the story of how i met kurt russell okay you met kurt russell yes. i met kurt russell it's all right true. james uh take us out and i promise i won't fade you out at the beginning of <laughs> you your story fade it out <laughs> Uh, Patrick really and I. Cross, well, what, what year is it, Patrick? Circa 2007? It was like 2008. 2008, 2007. Um, we were in Disneyland. I was grabbing some French toast. Yeah, we were we were in the uh, Continental Breakfast. Yeah. Um, and we were in line just grabbing whatever. And this guy walks up to me. I, I'm toasting a bagel. And he walks up to me. He's like, 
Are you using that? And I look, I'm like, holy fuck, this is Kurt Russell. <laughs> but I cannot confirm it because he had whiskey on his breath and sunglasses on, but flowing fucking mullet. And uh, I was so like... it probably wasn't him. No, it was probably him. You probably, you probably, you probably just met some man. No, it was Kurt Russell. Have I told you about the, cut the time I met Robert De Niro? Anyway, I was at Walmart. <laughs> Thank you.